I think Union Station is the perfect place to realize this opera as an adaptation of the book of Invisible Cities because it's inherently about travel. And it's inherently about what we look for when we go on our journeys, um, whether they're vacations or whether they're business trips. But the act of going to another city um, is fundamentally what the book is about. And it's about what happens in our imaginations and in our memories, in our hearts, when we are taking that journey to whatever destination we're going to. Invisible Cities is a compendium of different, let's call them snapshots, of imaginary cities imagined by Marco Polo. That is, he was historical, but this is a fiction, and he would be fictitiously relating these 55 snapshots of imaginary, therefore invisible cities, to the Kublai Khan, the, the Tartar Emperor of China. What Calvino does in the conversations between Kublai Khan and Marco Polo is he, he creates these images of cities, and through those images he reveals relationships between built environments, social life, and economic life. So he has this great story where he talks about how all the astronomers got together and they came up with perfect astronomical approach to urban planning. And the urban planners took it and they built the city that the astronomers and the theorists told them would be the ideal city. And then a generation later, the houses are full of people with two, ba two humps on their back and are insane and are doing wacky things. And they, he gets to the end and he asks you the question, is it that the astronomers are wrong? Or is it that this is the city that's the utopia? And Los Angeles is perfect, right? Because Los Angeles is both that city, that city that everybody thought was gonna be the better city, as Dana Bartlett put it in the early 20th century, and that city that everybody came to hate by the middle or the later part of the 20th century as the failure city. But it's neither the great city, the better city, nor the failed city. It's actually a really interestingly great and complex and failed city. Union Station's a fascinating example because it's one of the last great railroad stations ever built in the United States. And Los Angeles, it, it, it is perhaps an irony that Los Angeles would be the home of that great train station as it symbolizes the end of the rail era, right? It, it's built, and even as it's being built, thousands of uh, Angelina families are buying automobiles. It has other symbolic meanings to me as an historian in Los Angeles. This was Chinatown. And it, Chinatown was torn down to make way for the new Union Station. It was an act of white dictation of power within the city. And it is a symbol of that of the, of the way that California had struggled with racial minorities, particularly Asian minorities, for decades at that point. In all those ways, Union Station's a very complicated social space, as well as a spectacularly beautiful built space. And again, we come back to Calvino. One of the reasons that I like the book is that the name, Invisible Cities. There is no invisibility in his cities, right? His cities are actually very visible places. It's what they reveal that's invisible. One of the beautiful things about the book and, and about when you're in a space like this, you start to realize that um, the directions that city go are not inevitabilities that the direction a city goes really depends on its own citizens to shape it. Very much the idea of this performance is to invite the audience for 70 minutes to meditate on that, uh, on that very idea. And the fact that we're leaving the station open is very much about letting us survey 
what our current city is like. The, the, the glory of the architecture, the moodiness of the lighting, the people that are populating this particular station. Um, it's, it's, it's a wide panoply of life in that city. And I feel that for the 70 minutes of the performance, we're inviting an audience in to experience all of that.